Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be doing some flexible crown molding. I'm gonna show you guys my process on how I do that and give you some tips and tricks. But before we go in, you'll notice I'm wearing some pretty heavy gear here. I got this beanie, got a couple of sweaters on, two pairs of pants, two pairs of socks. I'm suited up because it is freezing cold out here. So check this out right here. It is 25 degrees out here in Louisville, Texas where I am currently. And that is an important factor for what we're gonna be doing today because these flexible moldings, if you want them to flex, like what they're meant to do, you need to have them a lot warmer than 25 degrees. These things need to be about 70 degrees if you really wanna install them because right now they're not flexible. Check this out. So here are the flex moldings. I got two of them. Um, this one right here was actually riding with me in the truck and this one right here was in the bed of the truck. This one, when I pulled it out of the box, had a lot more flexibility to it, but it's still nowhere where I need it to be to install it. And this one was pretty much just completely frozen. It's already loosened up a little bit, but I couldn't even open it at all. So if you look at this, additional tips, lay molding flat after removing from the box. After 30 to 45 minutes, the part will return to the shape that it was originally formed in it will be easier to install. Material performs best above 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's been a couple of hours now and these flexible moldings have acclimated to the internal temperature inside this house, which is a great thing. They're not frozen in that circular shape anymore. So now we can actually work with them. These right here are what's known as OSR flex moldings, which means outside radius. It's when the molding is gonna be put on the outside of a circle. And they're custom pieces. I came weeks ago, measured these um, circles, these radiuses, and I sent it to my supplier and then they shipped me these and they're made just for these sections of flex that we're gonna be working in. So these are going on the outside of a circle. If it was an ISR or inside radius, it would be going like right here on the inside of a circle. So that's very important. Just make sure if you're gonna do this, get the inside radius like this or the outside radius like we're doing today. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and prep the wall. And I'll talk to you a little bit about how we prep the wall and get ready for installation on this. So this is the crown we're gonna be using. This is a six and five sixteenths symmetrical crown. And when I say symmetrical, I mean, it doesn't matter which way we install it you can't install it upside down. It's the same exact either way. So with that, I know that my wall projection is four and a half and my ceiling projection is the exact same four and a half. And what I want to do with those numbers is cut a scrap piece to four and a half, which I have right here. This is that four and a half inch scrap piece. So there you can see that four and a half. And then I'm going to take that scrap piece in a pencil and I'm gonna mark the ceiling and the wall at four and a half because this is where our flex molding needs to sit. And since it is a rubber flexible piece of trim, it's gonna to wanna, to, you know, just go wherever it feels like it wants to go. So this line indicates that the molding will be there. And when we do it on the ceiling, then it'll be there. So when I go to put this flex mold in, I need to be somewhat on those lines right there, inside that window. All right, so we got that marked. The next step in this process is figuring out these miters right here. So what I'm gonna do is take my miter finder right here, look at it in position, and see that we have 26 degrees. And then all I'm gonna do right here is just write 26 degrees. I'm gonna to go to the other side and do the exact same thing. Yeah, 41 degrees in this one. Now that I have my wall projection marked, my ceiling projection marked, I've got my two miters found for their degrees. I'm gonna take a piece of blue tape 
and I'm gonna stretch it across the span of this curved wall right here. And I'm gonna make sure I go past the where the circle ends so I can cut that sharp with a knife. So I have I know I have an exact piece of tape that's the exact measurement of this circle curved wall right here. And I'm gonna use that pencil line as a guide for my blue tape. And that's going to help me get a more accurate measurement here. Usually I would have um, two ladders right here, but it's all good. And I'll just stretch that out and move this ladder. Pull that right there. All right, now that it's right there on the wall projection of the crown, I'm gonna take sharp blade and cut it right there where those two miters would come together. So that's why you wanna make sure the tape is long enough so you can get a nice sharp cut. And then when I peel that, I know that that's exactly where the bottom end of my miter needs to be when I cut it on the, on the saw. I'll go to the other side, do the exact same thing. This blue tape is an exact measurement of what I need to cut this flex molding to. Now with this flex molding, cutting it can be pretty intimidating because you're talking about sometimes a $500 piece of trim because it's a custom order, it's a real thick molding. And you know, you, you could be intimidated by that. I have been in the past where it's like, I don't even wanna cut this thing because it's not like you can just run back to the supplier and get a new one. It takes two weeks usually to get it made and shipped to you. So don't let that intimidate you. One good thing about these flex moldings is that since they're rubber, you can actually tug on them and pull them to the, to the final, like say you're like a little bit short, which I have been in the past, you're gonna start pulling on that molding and seeing that it stretches a little bit and that's totally fine. Now, I would say you don't wanna be any shorter than like 3 16 because that's gonna be hard to pull. Like if you're a quarter or more shorter, um, you may have made a mistake, but just follow this process that I'm showing you and you'll be good to go. Now, when you pull this tape off, you also don't want to stretch the tape. So just pull it very gently. And you want to make sure a big, big part of this process, it helps having two people because one person can hold the other end of the tape so it doesn't fold and touch itself. But you don't want to like tug on it. Like I was feeling resistance right there. I don't really want to pull on that. What I'm going to do is just move the ladder and, and pull it off gently because there is some stretch in this tape and you don't want it stretching on you through this process. If it did stretch on you, you would just end up with a longer flex mold and you could trim it down but there's no reason to go through that process. So I'm gonna pull this. Now we have our, now we have the length of our flex molding for this radius wall right here. I'm gonna take this straight to the flex molding and lay it on it. And I use the blue tape because it's, it's a pretty low adhesion tape. So if it does touch itself like it did right there, I can pull that apart and it's not a big issue. Now what I'm gonna do, at this point, I'm gonna inspect the flex. A lot of times at the ends, they're kinda weird. I guess the way they're molded, maybe they get a little thick or thin at the end. So what you can do in that case is just grab your scrap sample, check that it matches good, and if it doesn't, bring the tape in a little bit. So I'm gonna grab my sample real quick and we'll see if this is milled out pretty good. I'm gonna say that's pretty good. I'm gonna be cutting an inside miter on it anyways. So, but overall, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna take my tape, put it on the very tip of this. So I know my miter is gonna go from this tip inside. So I'm just gonna lay this on here, just following the curve of it. And like I mentioned, that, that low adhesion tape, 
like this blue tape here is good for this because it, even if it, you know, like it's touching the carpet or this drop cloth right here, it's not really going to stick to it and uh, rip or anything like that when I peel it up. I can just peel it up. So we'll keep placing this on here all the way to the end. And then at this point, we have our piece measured. We can go ahead and cut it. Now, you may be thinking like, wow, that's a lot of extra footage. It is because I always go bigger on these because I just want to make sure I have enough. I mean, that's just, you don't want to be short with these things because there's no returning them. Also, I should be able to take what's left here and use it on a little inside wall right here that we're gonna be doing at another date. So that's at least kind of what I planned. We'll see if that works out after I cut this. So then at this point, I would just make sure I'm good, make sure the tape is everywhere it needs to be, that it's stretched out across, that it's stuck across this whole piece. And then I can just take my pencil, mark it here, and then you're done with the tape. It doesn't matter where you're gonna cut this thing. Like if I was gonna cut it right in the middle, like say if I just put the tape like, like I started the tape here, and then I let it go just wherever it ended up. No matter where you cut this thing, you're gonna have the same, the same run and the rise. So if you start at this end, or if you move it to the middle, or if you move it to this end, that doesn't matter. So I suggest just start at one end, and you'll be good. So now I need to know another trick you can do so you don't mess this up. If you notice earlier when I measured for the miter degrees, I wrote on the wall. If I remember correctly, this side was 41 and the other side was, let me check what I wrote, 26, 26 degrees. So now when you go to cut this, we'll just write it right here, 26 degrees. I know I'm going to be coming in 26 degrees somewhere right there, 41 degrees coming in right there. Now, this is the bottom of the flex mold. You don't ever want to put an outside radius when you're putting the tape on it. You don't want to put it on this side. You want to make sure that it's in the proper position. So I know that's a lot to take in, but let's go out to the saw, cut this flex molding. All right, so you guys know I do my crown nested. And even when it comes to the flex, we're gonna do it nested. I think it works better because it has that bend to it. If you were trying to cut it flat, you'd have to like push that bend out. But when it's nested, it feels like it, it wants to just go in more naturally. So this is gonna be kind of a weird part that you, you might have to struggle with just getting it into a position where you can hold it in that nested position but as long as your section that you're cutting is flat against the base and flat against the fence I mean you're really going to be good to go and as you can see mine has some coming over to do and this is going to be very crucial that I get this actually you know what I need to do first since I'm still developing my fence, let me do this. I gotta go into 26 degrees. So go into our 26, lock the fence back down. And now it's very crucial that I get this cut right on the tip because that's the measurement from the tape. Try to hold it as firm as possible and try to keep it as straight as possible, even though it wants to turn on you. We'll come over about a half inch more. The biggest thing with this stuff is just to take your time, really. All right. 
Since it wants to curve up that way, you can see it's like a little raised off the base, but where I'm gonna be cutting it right here, what I'm gonna be left with is actually on the base. I could see it's touching right there. So that's not really a big deal. We're just worried about what we're gonna have right here. I'm touching the base here, I'm touching the fence here. That's the piece I'm gonna be left with over a little bit too much. Just go back like an eighth. I'm gonna say that's good. Now, before I cut this, whenever you're cutting this stuff, you wanna make sure that you take your time with it because it's not like you can just chop this thing down. It will catch the blade and it will stop the blade. So just be careful with that. Just go real slow. You're gonna notice I'm, I'm gonna go really slow with this cut. So here we go, take your time. I'm just lifting the blade guard to make sure I'm still in position. And that should be our 26 degree inside miter on the left hand side. So we got that, this thing is already freezing again. Look at that. It is cold out here, guys. <laughs> it's not the best day to be doing this stuff, but it is what it is. So we're gonna go to our pencil line now. Before I do that, let me dial into 41 degrees. That is crazy. It's already frozen in that position. Go to 41. And like I keep saying, I wanna make this out of plexiglass so I can just see through it without lifting it up. So let's double, triple check that. <laughs> 41. This one's gonna be a little more tricky because we've got more left over. What you could do is give yourself like an inch and just cut it straight right here because we're gonna be making our cut come in this way anyways. So you can just cut it straight, but I'm gonna see if I can get this thing to lay in the cradled position as long as it is on that other side. Yeah, it might be a little awkward. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna cut it. So, I'll refine that miter. Just gonna cut it off uh, about an inch or two. And what the whole purpose of that is, it just leaves me with less to wrestle with over there. Then we'll go back and find that 41. And if you ever wanted to um, put some cheese on your taco, these flexes make some good cheese. <laughs> uh, it's pretty crazy the stuff that I guess the flex dust that it makes. Pretty weird stuff. But yeah, we're back at 41 degrees and now we can make this cut. It did not take long for this stuff to freeze again. <laughs> it's crazy. Let's 
see, you just need to line up the blade with my pencil mark. All right, I'm gonna call that good and just make sure I'm on the base and the fence. So in theory, we should have a perfectly cut piece for that radius wall in there. We're probably gonna have to let this thing get hot again because it's, it's not really, I can't really work with it right now. So we're gonna probably just go do the same exact process on the other flex that's above this one and get it cut and just let them warm up again. It's looking like what we're gonna have to do because they're usually not this stiff. I mean, this is pretty crazy. No, they usually just kind of fold over and they would just hang over. But that's what we're doing right now. So we're gonna do the same exact process and then let these warm up and show you the installation. All right, so we have our first piece cut that we showed you. We got our second piece of flex molding cut that we did off camera. And for this installation, there's a few tips and tricks that I wanna share with you that I think will make it much easier on you. So the first thing I'll recommend to you is use an 18 gauge brad nailer. And if you think that's a little light duty for this, um, you're absolutely right. But the reason we're using a light duty fastener for this application is because if you shoot this material with the big 16 or 15 gauge nail, you will get more anchor to hold it in there. It's a more stout nail. And I've marked the stud locations, so you would definitely, this thing wouldn't be going anywhere. But the reason I don't use thicker gauge nails on flexible moldings is because they dimple when you shoot them. So I've seen a lot of flex moldings where they were shot just over and over and over just to get them in position and it's everywhere there's a nail hole there's a dimple there now thankfully this molding right here is very thick and i don't think we're going to have a problem with it dimpling too much but if it does i'll show you and if it does we would go back over that dimple with dry decks which i've shown in past videos which is a filler and kind of float that out to make it look more natural but we're trying to make it look like there's no nails in this. So we're gonna shoot it in stud locations, but more importantly than that, we're going to um, put the liquid nails up there. That's really what's gonna be holding it to the wall. And I get the question a lot, if you put liquid nails onto a textured painted surface like this, is it gonna stick or is it just gonna fall off with the paint? It's going to stick and it's going to stick well. The paint is not a thick enough surface to really fall off on its own, if that makes sense. So anyways, if you're gonna be doing this alone, I don't recommend that. Find someone to help you, but I have done flex moldings alone, and pretty much what you do, what I do, I haven't done this big one alone. I've done like little four and a quarter colonials and stuff. But what I usually do, I usually just throw it over my shoulder, and then I'll put it in position and kind of shoot it following the bottom pencil line the whole way. And another thing too, if you want to dry fit it, you can do it this way too. So what, what I mean by that is get it on your pencil line. So I'm going to pretend like I'm doing this alone. I'm not going to install this right now. But what I would do and have done is get it right in its place, right? You can kind of use the nail gun to support it and then tack it up. Okay, this would be how I would dry fit if I was by myself. We're gonna follow that pencil line. On the dry fit, you don't wanna hit the studs either because you're just gonna make more work for yourself. 
getting it out. So then we're going to go up on the pencil line. We're going to have to shoot every so often to get it to follow the pencil line. You'll notice that. And as we move, it wants to fall off the pencil line or curve up. So if I was doing this alone, I would just follow that pencil line, only shooting the bottom first, okay? So I'm not going to continue with this because I do have a helper and there's no point to work against myself like that. But I'll just keep going, shooting the bottom until I get to the other end. And then at the other end, if I was a little long, I would know like, okay, I need to cut this much off. And then I would pull it back out of the, of the wall and I would bend the nails back and forth and break them off and go cut off however much I'm long. But usually with the tape method that I showed you, you're pretty much gonna be dead on pretty much every time. You check this piece, see if it fits. We're gonna throw the camera on a tripod and try to get you a good angle of it. Um, we're gonna check it with sample pieces, make sure we got an accurate angle. And then we're gonna go ahead and put liquid nails in this area. So if our crown is sitting right on the bottom edge of that pencil line and the thickness of the flat side of the molding is, I don't know, about an inch, inch and a half or so right here, then we know we can put liquid nails an inch and a half right here and it's going to be having a nice surface to hold against. If some liquid nails comes out and squeezes beyond, we're just going to wipe that like caulking and we'll touch it up later with this wall paint color. So here we go. So what we're going to do right now is do our dry fit. I would always dry fit flex moldings. I would never be so bold as to just start shooting it and say, hey, it's good because you you never know just because of the variables that play into it. So if it does fit, we're going to hit it up with this liquid nails, like I mentioned, and we're just going to go about installing it. So let's check it out. We'll see if it fits. One other thing too, we're doing this with these miters. Now on this side, I have a 36 degree miter. So I cut a sample with a 36 degree miter. So I can try to match that up and make sure it's gonna be nice and um, tight right there. And then I have a 25 on this side that he's gonna check. And we're gonna do that before we start gluing or shooting anything, obviously. So here we go. good you can check your miter and then we'll really check for um, fit after that yeah that's good so we're both good now we're going to make sure we don't have to trim it or stretch it just by holding it on that pencil line pretty good huh mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really good right here too. That tape, every time it does the trick. Okay, so we are good at this point. We're gonna just start placing this adhesive on the wall and sealing. We're kind of keeping it above like I don't know, a half inch from the pencil line just so we don't have a lot to mess around with if it wants to push out of there with the squeeze out. Like I mentioned before, we're gonna start shooting just the bottom and we're gonna follow that pencil line the whole way across. Because when it comes to crown, 
If you're going to see imperfections, you're going to see them at a horizontal level. And especially with the flex being so wavy, it's going to be like waves. So we want to make sure we get that dead on. The ceiling will just fall where the ceiling falls and it'll fit naturally. I'm going to actually let that sag just a little bit. Now what you'll find too, is that you gotta use quite a bit of nails, cause you're basically stitching it to that pencil line. And as you go, you'll notice the molding wants to kind of twist and bend. So you're just getting a foundation established really. See if you can go down a little bit right there. Yeah, perfect. And you can go back up a little bit. So now that we got that bottom shot in and established, we can just push the top up and it will fall where it falls. And it's really going off the bottom, so it's gonna be perfect. But we're still gonna work from one side to another. We're not gonna shoot in the middle here and then come out this way. So we're gonna shoot here and I'm just gonna work my way back. And remember, it's mostly the liquid nails that's holding this up. because it took out a lot of fumbling around with samples for me right here. So we got 36 degrees, we are dead on there, and you can pretty much count on it that we're going to be dead on there with the 25. So we got that flex in right there, we got to do this bottom one too. It's going to be the same exact process, we're not going to show you that on camera though because it's the same exact thing you just saw. But we did it up there because we had good lighting, but I want to show you just how trustworthy that miter finder is and how nice this flex molding will join with the MDF that's going to come into it right here with this miter right here. So if I can line it up and hold the camera, you can see that's a pretty good miter right there. And obviously with this molding here, we're going to want to put some kind of adhesive, probably just the liquid nails again. We'll just put liquid nails on this surface right there and then when this piece comes and smashes into it right there it's going to squeeze out it'll fill in all any gaps that are there but it'll also hold it over time so we know that's going to be held nice and tight right there so that is pretty much how you install flex molding uh, flex crown molding at least flex crown molding is probably the hardest to install um, Flex casing would probably be second hardest and then flex base probably be the easiest thing for flex that you would ever install. But that's it, it looks good and we are 
you're going to move right along with this installation. So there you have it. There's our straight MDF piece mitered in to our flexible rubber piece of trim. And that came out really nicely. One more to go, and then we'll run all these straight pieces. All right, so one last tip before I actually end the video. I just thought of this, and I really need to share it with you if you're going to take on this task of installing this flex molding. And I know this question's gonna come up, but don't ever pre-finish flexible millwork because it'll crackle on you. That means don't prime it, don't pre-paint it, always finish it after you install it because if you put that layer of finish on it and you go to flex it around upon the install, it's gonna crackle and just be a complete mess. So always finish these moldings after they're in their final place after the installation. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.